here we go. All right, my name is Kurt Dobbins, and I am starting, well, started Kokosing River Banjo Company of 2020. Um, 2020 wasn't the best year to really start much of anything. So I'm going to try again, and I'm making this video to kind of give everybody an idea of what goes into making one of my instruments. They're really one of a kind, um, and they're fun. I have, I have a lot of fun making them. This is why I'm out here all the time doing it. Uh, I, I'm still going to make them if they don't sell. <laughs> but I'm going to go through on this video and show you guys how I choose wood, find wood, select wood, how I cut the wood, which is a lot of fun because it's like butchering. You just get to make shit go away right now and get right down to it. And uh, So we're going to make one of these first. We have to make a glue up. It's a banjo pot, glued up, 13 pieces, and we're going to machine it. We're going to machine it to a nice, nice looking pot, and that's how I make mine. They're shoeless. There's no shoes. Everything's nice and slick looking. It works damn fine. So that's how I make them. I'm going to show you guys how I make a neck. If anybody ever wants to build instruments, I can, well, this is a good demonstration. So you're going to learn how to take one of these, nice glue up, laminate, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven pieces. And you're going to make something like this. Nice banjo neck. I make a small heel on mine, so you can get your hand right up here play it a lot easier. I don't know why people put a big heel on them. Alright, well, that's about it. So, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to show you guys how this is going to work. Alright, here we go. Alright, so the first thing you're going to need is a big ass piece of wood. Nice slab to start with here. And this is it. This is what we have. This is four inches thick. Roughly 36 inches long on this. This is for the necks. The grain on this is straight enough to do what we need to do. Now this is where I like to spend some time because you get to see these are pieces of the pot, that round ring. And we get to make all these patterns come out. So you need to learn how to cut this board to show the pattern that you want to see. There's some nice patterns up here. It, it, um, learn how to cut wood. It, it's, it's important. And then my fretboards, so what we have right here is a big bark inclusion where another branch was coming out. And I should be able to get two or three fretboards off of this. And they're very pretty off of each side of this. I'll be able to get as well my peg head out of here too. And this is when I make my pick boxes. This stuff in here, that's where you get a pick box from right there. So, and when you're cutting, when I cut, I always kind of look at things. You got to slow down because uh, sometimes you can find patterns that, that are quite neat and you can find like an owl. This guy, this guy's a resonator back now. But it, so you got to keep your eyes open when you're cutting. Look for patterns. Look, look for, you know, fun stuff that you want to show off. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're cutting open this piece of wood and displaying it. So how you do that <sighs> kind of gives that banjo or instrument or whatever you're making, lets it kind of speak on its own. So I'm not going to videotape me using the saw. Everybody knows how a saw works. But we're going to come back and all this shit's going to be cut up and we're going to look at it. We're cutting the fretboards and the peg heads right now, quarter inch.
pretty. Okay, so we're back from the saw. We got all that shit cut up and all that board turned into this. And then we have a stack in the corner that uh, is not the best. So this is the cream of the crop stuff over here. Now I marked this as pot because I knew there was good stuff in there and there was some damn fine stuff in there. So this is gonna make three chunks. I cut these in nine inch sections so I'm gonna cut a pie wedge out of the back of this because we're eventually gonna glue all these together and clamp them. So the face that we show, which everyone's gonna see, is this outside face. And we're gonna have to cut into it to make it round. But, so I pick the prettiest side that I like the best. And so this is an outside piece and it's three. Outside piece, three. This, it's a knot right here and it's it's trash, but we can save this. And this has spalting in it. It's got some black, pink, and white spalting. It's pretty good stuff. This thing, we got three out of him, three out of him. This guy's junk. And three out of him. Some of these, I'm, I'm making seamless ones now that don't have one single glue line, but that's something we need to talk about later. That's a whole new thing to me. We got our fretboard right here. I gotta move this shit. Which I'm, I'm really excited about this. I got quite a few fretboards out of this piece of lumber. It's, it's gonna be something real nice to go. This is the fretboard we're gonna use for this instrument. This is gonna be for another one, and another one. Um, just now when I cut these, I have to weigh them down because they're not dry yet. This piece of lumber sat for two and a half years in the yard and it was standing dead for several years. But it's a thick piece of wood and it's probably still at 15%. But with how we cut it, it'll dry rather quickly and these are gonna be our peg heads here nice crotch wood air compressor I'm gonna put a resonator back on it and these are gonna be the two pieces for the resonator back I like putting resonator backs on my banjos if I'm gonna do go to all the goddamn work and build an instrument I'm gonna put a resonator back on it so that's it I'm gonna cut the rest of these into the pie shape, and then we're gonna go up to the glue up jig. Gonna glue up, they have to glue up for 24 hours, and then they have to sit. This is gonna have to sit for a week before we can put it on the Bridgeport mill and mill it out. So, that's it, we have all our pieces though. Oh, and our neck. Our neck is right here, it's all straight grain stuff, really boring, one, two. We're all gonna laminate these guys together. We're gonna help each other out, stay straight. That's it, and that's gonna take another week to dry too. Other than that, we're gonna meet back up down in the basement at the glue up station. Okay, so I went through and I marked each side that I wanna see on the outside face of that banjo as show. So show side, show side, show side. When I'm cutting this on the band saw, I got my table at 15 degrees. This is why I keep these short. Because I never, I don't save myself any time by doing a big long piece because you lose control over it versus this. I have nice clean cut. I can get three pieces out of this. I've tried to do them longer and I, I just waste my time. So I just save myself the hassle and just do them in short little blocks. And it makes it a lot more fun to do. So show side, this needs to be flipped upside down. Sorry. I made that mistake a couple times.
All right, now we're down the basement shop now, and I used to glue my glue ups in the other shop, and it's just easier to do in the basement. Um, I do all my final fit and fit and finish work down here, uh, stringing, action tuning, all the assembly work is done down here, and this part of the glue up is done down here now. And how I glue these up is I made a clamping fixture, especially for clamping the rings, and it works damn good. Um, made it myself, I had to make all my tooling. Uh, when we get further into it, I have a lot more tooling what was required to build this instrument. It's a model number, and everything I built for it just makes everything nice and easy. So, a nice aluminum top. When I'm fitting these pieces, we're going to be wax paper. I use Type Bond 2. I don't need 3. I don't need to be waterproof. This thing is going to be coated in nitrocellulose lacquer. It, it should never see water, ever. Um, so type on two, it's great. It's going to do more than what you need to. Honestly, probably standard Elmer's glue would do the job too, but type on two is what I use. So I'm going to set the camera up here and I'm going to show you how I glue this up. all these I kind of looked at them before I assembled them uh, to see what kind of face they're going to show on the outside the one two three uh, all the way to 12 um, and I always take a banjo rim that's cut set it on there make sure it when it comes in the mill it's going to cut everything out inside and out so if you have any issues now is your time to address them but just make sure it works now each one of these faces, this is all saw cut, and it works all right, but I like to sand them, each one, and get all that out, and then glue them up. So it's going to be, oh, it's probably a half hour, 45 minutes worth of sanding to get each one of these just kissed, and then everything glued up. So I'm going to sand all these, and then I'll bring you back when I'm starting to glue them up. And right now, this wood is at... 17% moisture, which is really high. I don't like machining them until they're around eight or nine, but it's only gonna take, I'm thinking about a week to dry this out. Um, I got a way I dry it, so uh, it works pretty good. But when we glue this up, we're gonna coat the tops and the bottoms with glue and seal them off. I only want moisture to get out from the inner and the outer. If the moisture is coming out of here, it's going to split it, and you're just going to end up with a damn mess. So that's how I that's how I do that. I keep them from splitting. I only let moisture escape from this and this. These are sealed off. That's how you do that. And I just seal them off with glue. So we're going to be back when I'm gluing them up. All I have to do is kiss each one of these faces. I clamp it up tight. Make sure it's going to do it before. You ever incorporate glue into this because you'll end up just, oh, it'll be a mess. And I've done it so many times, you think I'd get smart. So I clamp this up as tight as it'll get. I make sure there are no gaps in any of these and everything is going to work great. And then I go back, put glue on each face, and then I clamp it up. And I have wax paper down here, uh, even type on two on aluminum. Man, it will not get off aluminum. It is. Once that glue sets, that, that's it. So I use wax paper on all my clamping fixtures. Try to keep the glue off of everything I can just to save myself work. All right. I've got all the faces sanded. I clamped it up tight no gaps it, it clamps up really tight and nice so I take each thread I back it off two turns just to give me some space for my glue up 
We're going to start with piece number one, and set aside piece number two, and aside twelve. I'm going to start gluing like crazy here. Just put some on the top. Like I said, we're sealing these top bases off. And I just seal them up with glue. It works fine. It gets nice and hard and it sands right off. Alright, so we got the top and bottom sealed enough side. I don't go too crazy with the glue but I'm damn sure not skimpy either so I'm gluing it together. You only do this once. point we're going to clamp the piss out of this thing and the camera might shake around a little bit sorry but I have a method to this and you'll get to see it so just start just till each kisses face of that just till each touch Some of them want to rise out. I'm going to fix that for them. Got a rubber mallet. So as we tighten these now, we have to tap it down. Kind of loosens them all up. Because I don't care about the top or bottom of this thing. All I want is all those glue faces touching as good as they can and being pressed together tight. Top and bottom don't matter right now. I gave them oh, 3 sixteenths of an inch long to peel off both top and bottom. Um, so all I want is the faces to just mate as good as they can get. So we're just tightening each screw a little bit. And you can keystone a piece too, where you drive one piece in more than the others. It really all depends. Uh, just depends on how they cut. And when you're tightening them with glue, it's a lot different than tightening them when they're dry because they, they bind up. With the glue, they're they're getting tighter than hell because they're all there's a that glue's a lubricant right now between the two pieces so they can really wedge together each finger tight I do put a small wrench on them nothing crazy but they do get wrench tight so here we go by about quarter quarter turn on each one not the prettiest thing but it works I tighten each one of them, still go over them again. I start on the opposite side. And 
and they take a little more. You, can't, you know your stopping point on this clamp. There's a definite feel to it after a while. There, and every wood clamps a little different. Oak clamps up a lot different than cherry. And just depends on your wood type and how it wants to go. But ash is my favorite, favorite wood to work with. It's pretty, it's, people don't like it. I don't know why people don't like ash, but it, it's a damn fine wood and it works great. And that is it. So in the morning, this will be dry. We'll pull it out. And I think we're going to do a neck glue up out in the shop. And that'll conclude this first video. So we'll have a pot and a neck in the glue up stage ready to go. So that's how I get there from a log out in the yard. And it was two hours, 30 minutes to get to this point. All right, so it's tomorrow, uh, about 14 hours has passed since we glued this up, and it is dry and ready to come out. So we'll just, now the thing is with this clamp, we got it really tight with it, and well, every time I get these and they glue up, that glue shrinks when it dries, and it actually pulls this ring tighter. So, even when you tighten the hell out of these screws, they always end up a little looser. It's kind of amazing how that works, but that's how it, how it does it. So, I'm getting all these out. I'm going to pull this ring out. What I do with these rings is I set them in front of a fan, and I blow air through it. So, it dries it out pretty quick. And then, it is like a small space heater. So after a couple of days of drying straight air through it, we're going to switch over to warmer air and let that sit for a few days. And that's really all it's going to take to dry it out. It should be a week until it's ready to be machined. Um, it may crack in some spots, but it's always minimal. Uh, that's it. That is how we do that. Punch that out. But glue on the bottom is wet, doesn't matter. Glue in the joints is dry. And ready to go dry. That's where I set my rings and then I just blow air through them. So I've already got quite a few made. Um, this is, it goes in phases. That's phase one. All right, so we're back in the shop and we're gonna do a neck layup now. Now, it's the same thing as the pot. So how we glue up our neck is gonna we have to kind of choose pieces to decide how we want to display the wood that we have at hand so this is our a basic neck and its shape and so we can see we got plenty on each end we got you know an inch on each end to cut off um, but what I'd like to display in this neck is this grain right here all right uh, these are quarter inch strips so Kind of lay my neck down when I'm doing this, and we will. I'm striping it with pretty straight grain cherry in between each one of these pieces that are really gnarly. So that's straight grain cherry, but then where the next with the fillet with the heads coming in right there, that's going to be figured. So, See, the belly of this neck is going to have all this grain right here. All this is getting cut out and going to go away. So I'll be showing this part of the grain 
and this grain will actually flow with the neck, which is nice. So that's what I look for when I'm doing kind of like a higher end neck. I'll glue up necks that are just plain boring straight grain, but I like doing my necks like this. So this is the center of the neck. As we can see, nice straight grain. This is what's going to help us keep this thing straight. But then at the end, it's the glue up. We're making plywood, so it's it's going to stay together and keep straight and true. So this is going to be on my peg head. Again, again, again. So I can guarantee you, nobody is making banjo necks like this because it takes time and patience and it's risky because it may not want to work. It may want to bend on us, so. But that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these to the sander. They're still rough sawn. I'm gonna sand them. I'm gonna, I keep my sequence because I, I laid it out, mapped it out. We're gonna end up with that. And these are gonna be two big caps on each end so I can fit the whole peg head in there. A lot of this wood goes away. Probably ha more than half of this wood will go away. But, and I'll show you the clamp we are gonna use. And it's gonna go in wax paper and make a big taco because all my glue drippings would drip on a machine and make a big mess. So I always keep my glue drippings in wax paper. It saves me a lot of time in cleanup. Okay, so I got her all clamped up, and the clamp I use is on my shaper. I have a pre-1915, it's got the square box ways, Cincinnati shaper, and I don't use it much, but I use it when I need to remove a lot of steel, and that happens once in a blue moon, but I do like this machine, it's a horse. So I use that. That saves my poor bridge port over there a lot of grief. So when I need to make stuff go away right now, I use this guy. But it's got an incredible vise on it, and I've made a lot of instrument necks in this vise. So we have all those laminates glued up in there, and all that glue squeezed out. We've got it in our nice wax paper taco, and that's it and in my little corner I've got like a Jackson Pollock painting of belts so that's it so we have a pot and we have a neck glue up now in the next video we'll take both these glue ups and we'll start working on them I hope you guys like that